My name's John Trudell. I know that humanity is not living in balance with nature. It's not happening. I mean, it's, and actually it's more than a little out of balance. Uh, humanity is actually, at this point, almost going against nature. It's beyond living out of balance. But I also think with humanity going against nature, that there's a small percentage, a small number of human beings that are behind this and driving it and imposing it upon just humanity in general. The, it reduces the opportunities for human beings to continue to participate in the evolutionary reality indefinitely. It's bringing a definite conclusion to the ability of the human beings to participate in this evolutionary reality. Because it's going against nature or the earth. I mean, you know, in, I mean, actually, in actual terms, you know, what, what the industrial man is doing is, is murdering the life support systems, murdering the water, the air, mur murdering the life that gives us the ability to have life. You know, and that's really what we're faced with. We can call it poisoning the water or whatever, you know, but in the end, it's, it's, it's like an act of murder, genocide in a way. Well, I think as human beings, we live in a technologic, perceptional, actual reality where a part of that technologic reality is that the civilizing process is it erases the memory of the human being. It erases the memory from the human being of being a human being. It's almost like a, spirit, a, a, severing, a severing of our connection to any spiritual reality. And in, and in once that has been imprinted into the consciousness of the human beings, see, then I think that's what makes these other things possible. It isn't that we're, as human beings, we're bad. It's got nothing to do with our badness. What it has to do is, is that there's a program going on that literally feeds off of the being part of human, eating our spirit. All right? and, and in order for all that to happen, then these imprinting things have to happen to our consciousness. And a part of that is to re erase the memory of the human being about being a human being. See, so we no longer participate in reality perceiving reality as human beings. We partici participate in reality as feeling as either like um, we're oppressed culturally, ethnically, gender-wise, class-wise, but we participate in reality from the eyes of being victimized and, and very fearful and insecure. We don't think like human beings. But the reason for that is, is because there's been a deliberate suppression of our memory of that identity. Mm -hmm. But on this planet, there's an industrial ruling class. And this industrial ruling class is the smallest percentage of human beings on this planet. The governments that are created are created to serve the needs of this industrial ruling class. And one of the needs of this industrial ruling class is they create these governments and, and to some degree these religions all right, and these economic systems as a way of controlling the mass of human beings that they're feeding off. What's the percentage of people that own 60% of the resources on this planet? Then, then we're starting to get to who, who they are. They do have names. Think more and believe less. I'm not gonna call it deprogram ourselves. It's, to me, it's really an issue of how do we recognize ourselves. You know, we need to recognize that we're human beings. Recognize that we're human beings and, and, and our connection to the reality of power is in that identity. Human, our bone, flesh, and blood, our DNA, we're literally made up of the metals, minerals, and liquids of the earth. We're, shape, we're part of the earth. We're shapes of the earth, like everything of the earth. And we have being, our being, our spirit. You know, and, and that being comes from, from our relationship to the sun-sky universe. Because, I mean, sunlight's literally like the sperm that brings life to the water-bearing womb that is the earth. So this is our being is connected to that. And all things of the earth have being because we all have, we're all made up the same stuff, just arranged differently and have the same relationship to sun-sky universe. Being, and we need to... So our, the reality of our relationship to power and purpose, so to speak, is in that identity. And, and now, so how do we recognize and, re, you know, get back to that identity? I don't have a specific... <laughs> I don't have a specific answer. But the closest I can say to it is that, is that if we would, a part of recognizing 
of ourselves is that to recognize our intelligence and understand the value of our intelligence. Because as human beings, our ability to access the reality of our power is in through clear and coherent use of our intelligence. See, our intelligence, that's the portal how we, we manifest and access the, our relationship into the reality of power as humans, is through, through the use of our intelligence. But we've been imprinted and programmed, you know, I mean, basically, where we're at now in the evolution of human beings, we're, we're basically in a period of time in this, in this industrial technologic world where the majority of the human beings participate in this reality based upon their fears and their doubts and insecurities, so their perception of their inabilities. See, and all that was imprinted in there to make us not recognize ourselves. And, and you know, and, and, and to understand the power and recognize the power of our intelligence is, let's say, through our fears and our doubts and in our insecurities, how bad can we make ourselves feel? And how does that affect the people around us? Well, that's power. That's our power. That's a, a manifestation of our personal power. But we've been imprinted to use it in this kind of a way. But so we do have power. It's in how we recognize it and choose to direct it and use it. So I would say the first step to this is like recognize the value of our intelligence and the power of our intelligence. Because I think that any, any person or people that would be concerned about saving the earth and saving creation and have this type of an awareness. I, I, think, that it's, I think that a necessary component to that is to give thanks to their, however one perceives the creator, give thanks to the creator, number one, for life, and number two, for the gift of intelligence. To show respect for this, maybe because we need to show respect to our intelligence and maybe it's a part of our thanks that we give. On a, on, a, on, a, on a daily basis, on a, almost in a ritualistic way. Because we, cr our intelligence to me, I mean, it's, it's like our imagination, our creativity, our thoughts, and then our understanding or misunderstanding and then our actions is what we manifest. And, and I think that it's time for us to understand, look at, recognize, and attempt to understand the value of our intelligence because whatever struggle is ahead of us, if we are to, to participate, continue to participate in the evolu evolutionary realities of human beings, it's going to take clear and coherent use of our intelligence to do it. Generationally, collectively, individually, but it's, that's what, it's, what it is going to take. Everything that has ever been done to create these emotional distortions in us has been done to keep us from using our intelligence clearly and coherently. Now, so, so how do we deprogram or get back? I mean, it, it goes back to the very basic, you know, we need to recognize ourselves. We really need to recognize ourselves. Then we can synchronize all the other things in a much more synchronized way. No, I don't believe anything, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, I, I don't trust the word or the concept. I think it's much more realistic to say either I know or I don't know or I think because be, for me when I, I mean just I have to do this I can't help it right? <laughs> because with the belief thing it means it's like I'm not being why don't I just acknowledge I don't know and in, and 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 think about things see I think we should say think in terms of I think this rather than I believe this because I, I think we'll activate the coherency system a little bit um, about the bottleneck and the thing, you know, in the race to midnight, it's after 11. And what can be done about it, I think that we have time. I think that it can be turned around in two generations. But it's going to take clear and coherent use of our intelligence to think our way through this. Not to emotionally react to the bad guys, because the, we emotionally react. We end up doing the same old stuff over and over again, and, and the bad guys just get badder and badder. That seems to be a historical reality. But also a part of that historical reality is that every rebellion that goes on, our cause may be just and right and all of the good, you know, all the pretty flag stuff, but in reality, in every situation, we always, we were emotionally reacting by trying to challenge their ways by their rules. We weren't thinking outside of the box. But we've been programmed not to think outside of the box because we've been programmed not to like ourselves and be insecure and this and that, so not trust certain abilities that we have. Now, so we have to get past that. If we can just seek to be as clear and coherent with our intelligence as we can, 
and, and, and within two generations, see, we, because that will create answers and solutions to problems that exist that have no answers and solutions. Clear, coherent, responsible, initiated response to what is going on. That industrial ruling class, you know, they, they, want what they, they, they want to keep what they have. They're on, a very, they're on an anti-life destructive course with, with the future. You know, so for that industrial ruling class, they need to purge this planet of huge, tremendous numbers of the human population. And they're going to do it. Right? I mean, that's what they're, they're setting it all in motion now. See, so that's where it's headed. And this is why, to me, it's, where, it's very crucial because I don't, I don't think that time is against us. Time is an ally. The real issue is, are we time's ally? Will we take the responsibility to use our intelligence clearly and coherently? Not be overwhelmed by the idea or say, how do I do that? But just head in that direction to think things out.